Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video we're going to look at second order systems and some of their characteristics and introduce damped natural frequency, damping ratio natural frequency, and a couple other things. We'll also play around with second order systems in MATLAB. Okay, so let's get started. Let's say you have a transfer function that looks like this. Some output over input and it is 3 over s squared plus 2s plus 10. Well, that's a beautiful looking transfer function, second order, because the, new, the denominator is uh, second order in s, and there's no zeros. And that's really the kind of system that we're going to focus on, second order systems with no zeros. Well, we can write this in a general form. We'll have some DC gain, times a quantity omega n squared and then the denominator will write it as 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. Well, so omega n is the natural frequency and you've probably seen that before maybe in a vibrations course and that has units radians per second and zeta is a damping ratio and there are no units for that, it's unitless. And then we have this, which I mentioned before, is our DC gain. We'll denote that as KDC. We also have another thing that we can construct from zeta and omega n, and we denote that as omega d. That's omega n times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. And we call that the damped natural frequency. And I'll abbreviate natural like that. So the damped natural frequency. Now, what we can do is characterize the step response of the system according to zeta. Specifically, if zeta is greater than 1, assuming that the system is, well, I guess we would assume the system is stable, uh, there would be no oscillation. What happens then is you have two real poles gets more interesting if zeta is less than 1, then you have oscillation. And for that case, you have a couple of complex poles. And if zeta is much, much less than 1, then you have lots of oscillation. We'll take a look at that in a minute in MATLAB. But that's one way to characterize the step response of, sec of general second order systems with no zeros. But let's explore this form a little bit more. So I'll rewrite it here as our G is KDC omega n squared over this. And what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and solve for the poles of this thing. So if I'm looking at the poles, I'm finding the roots of that equation. And I would get negative 2 zeta omega n plus or minus that thing squared minus 4 times that last term all divided by 2. Now what I'll do is I'll assume for this analysis that zeta is between 0 and 1. Okay, so zeta is less than 1 but it's positive. And so let me simplify this a little bit more. We have negative zeta omega n by getting rid of those two twos. And then what I'll do here is I'll factor out a 2 omega n. So we'll be left with a zeta squared minus 1. Now since I know that zeta is less than 1, I know zeta squared is going to be less than 1. And so I will have a negative quantity within that square root. So I'll rewrite this just one more time like so, 1 minus eta squared j. So I'm taking, I'm flipping the sign here and then bringing the j outside. So that's great. So here's our poles, our roots of the characteristic equation, the poles of that transfer function. So if I have poles, I might as well go ahead and make a pole zero diagram, or in this case, there's no zeros. Um, so I'll have a pole here, and let's say uh, it's, it's 
cousin down here, it's complex conjugate pair. Now if I look at these pieces, the real part is at negative zeta omega n. That means this distance is zeta omega n. And my natural frequency, or let's, let's do the imaginary part first. This piece is, oh, and I just noticed something. There shouldn't be a 2 here, because when I divide through by the 2 here, that 2 goes away. So let me cross that out. Great. So this distance is omega d, which was omega n times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. Okay, now this distance can be found by combining the squares of those two and simplifying, and by doing that we would get this distance to be omega n. So our natural frequency is the distance the pole is from the origin of the complex plane. Zeta omega n is the distance it is along the real axis, and the damped natural frequency is the distance the pole is in the imaginary direction. Now another thing we can do with our roots is going back to partial fraction expansion and getting a solution to a step response. We could say that our y, of, y over u, it looks like a v, but it's actually a u. If we do the step response, u is equal to 1 over s. So y is equal to this g times 1 over s. 1 over s, g. And then we could go ahead and do a partial fraction expansion. And what we would get is that term due to the s, plus we would get a couple of complex terms. We'd get a c2, um, sometimes it's denoted as s plus a over a denominator, and then we would get a c2 or a c3 times a, another constant over this uh, same denominator. And that denominator is s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. We get the same denominator right there. The point of this expansion, at least the point that I'm trying to make, is that what we get here is the classic decaying sinusoidal response. And that's really all we need to know, because then what we can do is say that we're going to have a term that looks like c1 e to the negative zeta omega n t cosine omega dt plus c2 e to the negative zeta omega n t sine omega dt. And of course we had this other term, I'll call it c0 now, which was our constant term. So that's what the step response looks like. And these two terms combined give us a really nice looking uh, decaying sinusoidal behavior. So let's look at that in MATLAB for just a minute. So here I am in MATLAB and what we'll do is, is we'll just make a second order system and uh, look at its step response. And to make that second order system I'll just go like this. I'll say omega n is equal to 2 times pi. That gives me a 1 second uh, uh, omega n or 2 pi radians per second, but a 1 hertz system. And then I'll let zeta equal something small, about uh, 0 0.1. And then with that, I'll say that g is equal to, and I'll use the transfer function command to make a transfer function object, um, omega n times omega n in the numerator, and then s squared 2 times zeta times omega n, that's my s term, omega n, omega n, and I get that. Great. So I have a second order system, has a DC gain of 1, and I could quickly create a step response of it. There it is. Now, if you look at this oscillation, remember what we had on the, uh, in the previous uh, slides, is that it was an e to the negative zeta omega n t times sine omega dt, and then there was a cosine omega dt term. That e to the negative zeta omega nt is this decaying exponential. So for instance, if we went and created another line that illustrates that decaying exponential, we could go like so. We'll make t 
t equals 0 by 0 0.01, I'll just go out to uh, 6 seconds. And I'll call it um, p. p is equal to exp negative zeta times omega n times t. And then I'll overlay that on top of this one. I have to shift it up by 1. Um, that's okay, so we'll put the hold on, and then we'll plot t and p plus 1. And there it is. So this is just e to the negative zeta omega nt. We can see what it's doing is that zeta omega n is squishing out that sine wave. So if you make zeta very, very small, it's allowing that sine wave a lot of time to oscillate compared to if you make zeta large, e to the negative zeta omega and t would squish that out squish that out very quickly. So to examine that what we can do is go all the way back here and change our zeta to 0.5. And then we'll make a new transfer function. How about we call it g1? And now we'll make the step response of G1. And that was superimposed onto this one very nicely. And we can see, maybe I'll blow this up a little bit, that it decays out extremely fast because the zeta omega n is much, much larger than it was for this case where zeta was 0.1 compared to zeta 0.5. Okay, so let's go back to looking at second order systems. So we know how to look at a second order system uh, in the pole zero diagram form, but let's go the other way. Let's say that we had a pole zero diagram, like so. And we had a couple poles in it. How about right here and right here? So this is negative 2, that's 2, and that's at negative 5. So from this, we can extract out a lot of information. Basically, all the information except the DC gain of its transfer function. So for instance, this distance is 5. So we know that zeta omega n is equal to 5. We also know that this distance from the origin of the complex plane out to the pole is equal to omega n. And that's equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared. So the square root of 29. And that allows us to solve for zeta, which is 5 over the square root of 29. So we could actually then form the transfer function. We could say it's k kdc times omega n squared, which is 29, over s squared plus 2 zeta omega n. So that would be 10s, because our zeta omega n is 5, and plus 29, which is omega n squared. So that's our g. That's the transfer function that relates back to this pole zero diagram. Now we'll do just a couple more things. Now let's look at the classification of second order systems according to zeta. They all have, there's a variety of different names. We have underdamped when zeta is between 0 and 1. And here the poles are in the left half plane and they're complex. And we get this type of response and we've been looking at that in MATLAB. We have critically damped when zeta equals 1. And then we have two poles that are identical and they're real in the left half plane. I'm using this little right angle with a 2 next to it to say that we have two poles right there. When zeta is greater than 1, we call it overdamped. It has this very uh, a slower second order or slower first order looking response. It's really not first order. There's a slight little um, inflection point right there. But it's uh, slower than it would be than if we had two poles, let's say, at this point. Anyway, it's called overdamped, and it's whenever zeta is greater than 1. Then we have undamped, when zeta equals 0, like so. And then we have a couple of disturbing cases. These are both called unstable. 
and they both are when zeta is less than 0. So this case, zeta is between 0 and negative 1, and in this case, zeta is less than negative 1. Here we have complex poles in the right half plane. Here we have two real poles in the complex plane. So several different ways to categorize second order systems according to zeta. The effect that omega n has is in dictating what this frequency is of the oscillation. Well, now that we have ways of classifying second order systems according to zeta, let's do a couple examples. Let's say that we have some transfer function that looks like this. And we would like to classify it as undamped, overdamped, unstable, etc. So what we have to do is make a pole zero diagram of it or find the roots of it. Let's just go ahead and find the roots. Here we'd have negative 6 plus or minus 36 minus 4 times 19. So 4 times 19 would be like this, 76 over 2. Well, we look at this and we can see that we have negative real part. That's good, so it's not unstable. Plus or minus here we have square root of 40 over 2, so it looks like plus minus square root of 10, j.